Welcome to day 29. Today, we're focusing on spinal health. So we'll begin to integrate a lot of what we've been learning from the feet on up and how we can do different movements, lateral movements, standing, bending, forward, backwards, and how you can integrate and connect with all of those parts to create that maximum length through the spine. So I'm excited to get started. Lisa will be joining us. So let's start. OK, so just bringing the hands to the wall. Have the hands shoulder width apart and walk back until the hips are over the, the heels. So as you do that, press into the fingers. Press into the index finger, the mound of the index finger. Lengthen through the thumb. So you're extending through the fingers and widening through the fingers. Not too much, otherwise they'll start retracting, coming back. But then just be aware where you are on the inner and outer wrist. So line the inner and outer wrist up. Look at your wrist, making sure that the inner and outer are parallel line. And then from there, pressing into the wall, lengthen the arms back and get that extension through the, the whole side trunk, through the outer armpit chest and through the side trunk without moving your rib cage down. Okay, so connect with the abdominal wall, moving from the pubic bone to the diaphragm, moving that towards one another to bring the abdomen in up toward the lower back, supporting the lower back. Outer hips are moving back, front thighs are moving back. Be even on your feet, toes are facing forward. Be on the heels, be on the mounds of the toes. Just go ahead and lift the toes up. Start to feel the engagement through the thighs. And as you feel the knees, start to lift. Draw the knees up even more. Roll the inner knees back. Roll the inner thighs back. So if I were going to do this and assist her, so you can just think of this as a partner working with you, I would take the strap and draw back. So there, as she keeps her hands connected to the wall, She's extending and opening through the armpit area. Tailbone is moving back toward me. Her inner thighs, both inner thighs, inner knees are moving back. Okay, so if you can have that image of the top of the femur bone moving back, you'll get more extension. Okay, and then walk forward toward the wall. And you're gonna take two blocks now at the wall for Adamukha Svanasana, and we'll use the hands at the, on the blocks. So have the thumb and baby finger side of the hand holding the blocks. Come into that plank pose first, so you feel the weight on the hands, and press down through the arms, so you can feel the, the back here a little bit rounding. Now press to the arms and lift up. So here with a little bit of height under your hands, there's a, a little bit more space in the shoulders. So you're connecting the hands to the arms. The inner arm is lifting up and the outer arm is moving down. The forearm is turning inward and the upper arm is turning outward. So there's a twisting action with the arms, which then brings some more space across the upper shoulders and across the upper back. And like in Ardha Uttanasana, you're lengthening back, extending from the hands through the side trunk, moving your hips back. Now you can come onto your toes, and with that, feel a little bit more lightness in the shoulders as you come up. Bring the shoulder blades up towards your hips and move the shoulder blades towards your chest. So you're getting that movement in the upper shoulder and not the front ribs dropping. Okay, so keep the front ribs moving back. And then now you can start to bring that attention to your legs. So keep the hips lifted. Keep this length coming through the tailbone. Hips lifting, toes bending. Again, bring that focus to the kneecaps, lifting the kneecaps up. And as you do that, you can start to feel that extension through the back of the knee, inner knee, outer knee, 
and the top of the knee and the lower knee. So from the top of the knee, lift up through the upper thigh and through the lower knee. So you're separating the legs. So this part of the leg is moving down, calf down toward the heels, and the upper leg moving up to the sitting bones. And then start to roll over the mounds of the toes and extend the heels toward the end of your mat. So resist the hips dropping. Keep the backs of the thighs lifting. Remember the strap I had on her thighs, moving the thighs back. So again, coming back to that extension from the calf, that lift from the thigh, and move the kneecap into, into the socket. Okay, and then come down. Forward Virasana. Let's take a couple of breaths there. And then we'll come up now and we'll go into Barvajasana in a twist. So we'll use one block at the wall. And you can sit on that block and then use the other hands at the wall. Okay, so starting with your right leg, standing and sitting in Dandasana. Yes, okay, so bring your left leg back. So here, just to recall, this foot is, the front of the ankle is over the arch of the bottom foot. The toes are facing straight out, and the thighs are parallel. So the thighs are descending, hips are descending, and you want to be about one arm's length away from the wall. So adjust yourself until when you turn toward the wall, you can bend the elbows, be on the fingertips, and you find that it's the right distance. If you're having to lean into the wall because <clears throat> it's not the correct distance, then come back. If you're back here and hardly going to the wall, then <laughs> come back into the center. So you want to position yourself in the center so you can use your fingertips, elbows. And as you, before you start twisting, remember this outer hip is descending, outer thigh is descending, the buttocks moving down, and then you're going to be lifting up. So working with that sequen sequential action of descending the hips, descending the thighs, the ankles, that foundation is there, and then you're lifting up, and then exhale, turn. So as you turn, you're turning, starting from the lower area here, the waist, the back waist, and then you're moving up with the next breath, turning as you exhale, and then you'll begin to move up higher. So this shoulder blade starts to move with this shoulder. So it's not just the arm, it's just not the shoulder here but from the spinal column to the whole side near the shoulder moving. And as that happens, then you start to turn in the chest. And this right chest turns, and the right chest is moving away from the wall. Using the fingertips on the hands instead of the whole hand will give you much more ability to connect with the arms and make those adjustments. Crown of the head is in line with the tailbone. So again, the neck is long. There's no bending back or forward. And then just observe what you feel in the neck. So when you turn your when you turn the body, you don't turn the head more than the body. And then finally, you can turn that head and just see is there any kind of constriction on this side? And then when you do the other side, you can feel that. So it's good to see if you have any tightness in your shoulders in your neck so that in your practice, you can work further with that. All right, now turn back to the center and come to the other side. So come into Dandasana first, straight legs, and then bring your legs over. So you're coming into a Virasana with the right left leg, and then the right leg comes over. So here, when you're on this block, the tendency is for the outer hip to lift up. So you can take the flesh of the buttocks with the right hand and draw it out to the side so you're sitting more evenly on that block. So this hip is on the block, and this hip is not. It's between the ankle and the block, so there's space for it to drop down. 
so that you can drop this waist down and at the same time lift up. Okay, bring your hands to the wall. Inhaling, exhaling, descend, legs, feet, hips, and inhale, lengthen up. So twisting is really important for the back. We have a lot of muscles, a lot of muscles on the right, muscles on the left. We have a lot of nerves. We have the whole vertebral column with the disc in between. And if we're not bending, if we're not twisting, if we're not moving, there's no circulation that goes into the back. So it's important to get that twisting action to get the blood flow into those areas. And as the blood flows into the areas, there's oxygen that comes there. It's also a sloughing off of dead cells. Also important for the lymph to get the lymph system moving, which is mostly in, in the armpit area and the front groin, some here in the neck. So that's one of the main ways that we're able to start to move the circulatory system and the dead cells. One more inhalation, lengthen up through the crown of the head. Exhale, turn. So just be aware of that length that's coming. Be aware of the turning action as you move from the lower part of the body to the middle to the upper. Broaden through the chest, feeling that spreading of the upper shoulder girdle and the spreading and the turning of the top chest. Aware of the abdominal area as you're turning in that Abdominal cavity, getting a twisting action there. All right, and then release. Okay, Dandasana. Okay, then coming out of Dandasana, you're going to get your uh, stool. If you have a stool, something a little bit higher, get that stool, or if you have a table, um, a desk, if you have a chair, if you, have, if you don't have any of those things and you just have a chair, you can also build up the chair with a couple of blocks on top of it, a mat, a couple of blocks, but we're gonna show here on the stool because it's already higher, but you can see here, it's quite a bit higher. It doesn't have to be that high, but you want to be able to bring the leg up so that the knee is much higher than the groin. So she's gonna stand on that block the left foot, uh, she's gonna bring the left leg up, yeah. All right, so as she does that, so you just wanna make sure you have the block on the mat so it's not going to slip. And this is your stabilizing leg, so you wanna press down into the heel, and from the heel you'll lift up into the hip. This hip is lifting, this pelvis is lifting, off that femur bone, so you're not sinking in the femur bone, but you have that feeling of the outer muscles of the thigh working and the hip. And then as you bring this leg up, this hip is sinking down. So the tailbone is moving down. And from the knee, you're moving down into the pelvis. So the femur bone is moving down. Your hip is moving down. With the hands on the knee, you're able to lift up. Get that lift through the trunk. Okay. Both feet are Tadasana feet, so you're pressing down. And then you're gonna bring your right arm, left arm up, and you're going to turn. So you're turning, bringing your arm over that leg. So you're hooking the arm, turning, turning the back body like we did in Bharvajasana, and using that hand and arm, be on the fingertips, and then bring your other arm back. Okay, one thing that can happen with this is that your knee can go to the wall and this hip goes out, or the knee goes in and this hip goes out. So keep that line of the hip to the knee. So keeping the pelvis stable, lift up, lengthen through the front body, through the pubic bone, to the navel, to the chest, and use your fingertips to turn. So this <coughs> Marichiasana one is gives you a little bit more 
availability for moving the body. So if you have any kind of tension in the back, this is something that will be a little bit more, uh, will be a bit easier on the back because you're not fixed anywhere. So use this to release. Lengthening up, so from that foot pressing down, lifting up through the hip, lifting right up through the center of the body, and turning. So you're turning around the axis, and you're using your legs and your arms to stabilize. Stay with the breath. Marichi Asana is a warrior, the sage. Not a warrior, but a sage. So a lot of the poses are named after animals, sages, warriors. So these are metaphors that we can take on as we are in our posture to feel that essence of the posture. All right, Lisa, release. OK. Now, because we want to keep her on the mat, she's going to come down, and then she'll move the stool to the other side. So when she brings the block to the right place for the foot, it's still on the mat. So if this were too high for you, then you would just get a chair and build that up, OK? But you can see here, it's not too high for her. As she presses the heel, she lifts up through the leg, lifts up through the pelvis, but descends this right hip. From the knee, she's moving down. And with the hands on the shin and the knee, she's lifting up. So getting that lift through the trunk, right up through the crown of the head. And then bring your left arm up, right arm up, and turn, walk your hand down. So sometimes you have to work to start to bring it down because you can be very tight in this area. So this area needs to be in your awareness, sensitive to that area, bringing that in, breathing into that area, not only turning it, but moving it forward. So as she moves that forward, she's lifting the chest. Inhaling, lengthening, exhaling, turning. As she turns, the shoulders moving back and the chest is turning toward the wall. So the whole front body is now turning toward the wall. Outer hip is descending. Maintain that contact with the bottom foot and lifting up. And then just be aware of the pelvis. So from that turning action to the navel, navel to the other side, there's a spiraling upward. Staying with that spiral, staying with that breath, Pressing the foot down, moving from the outer knee to the outer hip. Press into the standing foot and lift up. So twists are invigorating, but they're also very quieting for the brain. So they're a nice combination of both activating and relaxing. All right, and then release. OK, we'll just do it once on, on each side. We're going to come to now Tadasana at the wall. So you can take your stool away. This, um, this sequence is more uh, supported. So we're doing most things at the wall. So you're coming to Tadasana at the wall, heels at the wall, hips at the wall. And then use the contact of the wall to feel what your posture is. So roll the shoulders back. We've been working on this all month. So getting that lift of the armpit chest, dropping the back armpit chest down, top of the shoulders moving down. Connect with the feet, have the big toes together. You can slightly, especially when you're at the wall, slightly bring your heels away. Press into the heels, press into the mounds of the toes, and lift up through the arches. As you do that, feel that inner lift from the inner leg. You can feel your hips at the wall. Now move your thighs to the wall, move your inner knees to the wall. And if you recall that 
direction from downward dog. From pressing the heels down, lift up through the backs of the legs. Draw your shoulders down through your fingertips. Feeling the hips at the wall, move the tailbone forward and still moving the thighs back. Inner thighs rolling back, inner knees rolling back. Stay with the weight on the feet. Now press into the inner heel and lift up through the inner leg. And with that lift, feel that lift coming all the way up through the core of the body, right up through the crown of the head. So the chin is parallel. You can feel the head at the back on the wall. And then we'll come into Urdhva Hastasana. So regrounding through the feet, lifting up through the legs, reach the arms up. As you stay with the heels, move the thighs back, lift, uh, lift up from the buttocks, lift up to the lower back, lift up through the middle back, and reach the arms up. With your thumbs at the wall, reach the fingers up even higher, and as you do that, keep descending the shoulders. So the tendency is to lift the arms up, lift up through here. So keep that containment of the upper arm into the shoulder girdle, and then lift up. So you can lift up, but keep this upper arm bone into the shoulder girdle. So here she's just lifting up and it's lifting up out of the connection. So here she connects and then she can lift up. So stay with that, stay with your breath, straighten your arms, lengthen up through the fingers. Smiling. Happy to be breathing, happy to be alive. And then bring the hands down. And interlace the fingers, Baddha Gulianasana. Turn the palms out. Maintaining that contact at the wall, thighs moving back, shoulders moving back, and lift the arms up. So as you lift the arms up, you can feel the tops of the shoulders moving down, shoulder blades moving down. Now, like in Downward Dog, watch that the front ribs aren't popping forward, so the abdomen is moving forward. So there's a slight lift of the upper back, which connects to the abdominal, the top of the abdominal, and from the pelvis, there's a drawing towards one another. So the abdomen is moving back. Can you feel that? So versus this, where there's just an overextension and no contraction, no connection through the abdominal area, that core of the body, so slightly drawing in towards one another. Now bring the hands down. Do we change the cross yet? No. So change the cross on the fingers, lengthen it out, and then lift up. From the feet, lift up. Lift up through the pubic bone, lift up through the navel. So the whole, you have the two sides of the spine, the front and the back of the spine. So lengthen up through the uh, anterior spine. Posterior spine is moving down, posterior spine. Okay, bring your arms down. All right, staying at the wall, you're going to go into Vrikshasana. So you bring your right leg up. You might have to come a little away from the wall, or you might not have your balance. So bringing the leg up, externally rotating the thigh, placing the foot so the toes are moving down, and your <coughs> heel is on the inner thigh. But what I want you to do, think more, is bringing that outer hip in toward the heel. So there's a sucking in of the outer hip and lifting. Like when you were standing on that block and you were lifting up and sucking in of that hip. So here, you're doing the same thing, pressing into the heel, sucking in. And with this knee, like with that bent knee that was on the stool, you're drawing back into that hip socket and descend the, descend the hip. And then reach your arms up, Urdhva Hastasana again. You can use your thumbs at the wall. As you lift the arms, descend that bent knee hip. Suck in from the outer standing leg. And 
and then bring the arms down, change legs, first come into Dasana, stand evenly, stand balance. So you're going to be standing on one foot, so feel both feet balanced, and then bring the weight onto that standing foot, bring the other leg up, bring the heel up, toes moving down. So when you're bringing this leg up, excuse me, you're going to feel that leg moving toward the wall like this. So you want to maintain the pelvis so that both hip bones are moving forward. Use this back buttock and that moving from the outer thigh in, holding that, you can start to bring the leg out to the side without turning this hip. So using your own body, contract through the buttocks there, bring that firmness to the buttocks, drop that lower, the upper buttocks down, and then move the knee back toward the wall any amount. Reach your arms up. Left thigh back, standing leg, lifting up. Feeling where your shoulders are at the wall, balance evenly on the left side and the right side. And then bring the arms down, good. Okay, now coming down, Tadasana. Okay, you teach a Trikonasana, so let's take the mat and spread the mat out near the wall, and you'll have a block. Stand in Tadasana. Okay. Preparing for Uchita Trikonasana, you're going to stand at the wall, and Lisa's taking two blocks, one on each side. You move the mat to the wall. So have your mat right up against the wall, and be up against the wall in Tadasana. You're going to have to move a little bit away from the wall, and then you'll jump your feet, three and a half, four feet apart. A little bit wider, if you'd like, four, four and a half feet apart. Take a wide enough stride that you're going to be able to Open through that hip space, okay, and then externally rotate your right leg. Keep the inner left leg lifted, reach the left arm up, and extend over that front leg. So remember, this is still like, you to, like Vrikshasana, that front leg is externally rotating. So externally rotate the right leg, cut the right buttock under, as you press into the foot, lift up through the knee. So starting from the foot, activating the entire leg, turning that outer thigh, moving the left buttock forward. So come a little bit closer to the wall. I'd like you to be at the wall, supported at the wall. So have your heel to your arch. Yeah, you don't need the block for the back. And then, as you're there, you can feel your hip at the wall. Turn the pelvis so that you're opening through the pelvis. That back thigh is moving back. You can feel your shoulders. Move your shoulder to the wall. Keep this bottom shoulder moving away, but keep the shoulder rotating, the arm rotating, moving back. And then reach up through that arm. So start with just the head looking forward, lengthening from the crown of the head, both sides of the neck are long. And then using the wall, the impression you feel with the wall, just turn so that you're not dropping the bottom ear. Often what happens is the bottom ear is moving like this. So we've already gone over the head, the neck, and the shoulders. So remembering that work that you did, turn the head and look up. Using that wall for that revolving action. Stay with your breath, a couple more breaths. When you prepare to come up, before you do, come back to the feet, come back to the legs, stabilizing, both legs moving toward the pelvis, keeping that firmness through the pelvis, and then reach that bottom arm up, 
and then lower the top arm down, coming down, turn the feet parallel, and then you'll turn to do the other side. So she's going to have to change that block just on the outer side of the left foot. Just looking that you've got that alignment, you're not too far away from the wall. And this heel is turning out a bit, turning toward me, so that the toes are either straight or moving a little bit toward the front foot. That's it. If you have too short a stride, just moving the heel a little bit will help you to get more space. So oftentimes I find with students in class, you don't want to move your legs too wide. So it's just a tricky way of us getting you to lengthen the legs a little bit more. Okay, raise your right arm up, extend that arm, and from that arm lengthening, go over that front leg laterally and deepen through that right hip socket as you go over. Keep that extension through that whole right side of the trunk from the waist to the armpit, and then bring your hand down. Now, she's got to the medium height block, but you could take the block higher as well, and you can take the block lower. If you take the block lower, your foot will be a little bit more away from the wall. Here in the sequence, we're using the wall for extra support for the back so that you can feel what it feels like to be a little bit more supported, and you can even stay longer. Lift the arm up, and now lengthen both sides of the neck, Good. And as she turns toward the wall, this shoulder comes away from the wall. This chest turns, but this shoulder still draws back. Inner arm draws back. And then as she reaches up, she can start to turn the head, look up at the hand. And now coming back to the feet, feel that you're nailing that big toe down, the inner side of the foot, the inner heel, back foot, outer edge of the back foot, you're lifting up through the inner back leg, and then start to turn, as you lift up through this leg, start to turn this pelvic rim. Lift up and turn, and bring your right buttock away from the wall. Stay a couple more breaths. She has her fingers on the block, but she could take her whole hand on the block, press down into the block, and bring that shoulder blade into the body. So there she's connecting the arm into the shoulder girdle and able to get that connection to the upper chest. Watch your front ribs. Front ribs and your abdomen is connecting towards your back body and not puffing out. All right, coming back to the legs, to the feet, to the pelvis, lift the lower arm up and raise the arm. Turn the feet, walk the feet in a bit, and then jump the feet together. Come back to Tadasana. Taking a few breaths in Tadasana, recovery breaths. Balance out your inhalation and your exhalation. especially letting that exhalation go. Next, we'll be practicing Virabhadrasana 2. So here, before we practice Virabhadrasana 2, we're going to come into Parjvakanasana. So you'll jump the feet a little bit wider stride. Then you teach a Trikonasana if you've been practicing a shorter amount of time. If you've been practicing longer, perhaps your, your Chita Trikonasana is as long as your Parjva Kanasana now. But the point is you want to be able to have a, a nice distance, and when you are going to bend the front leg, you need more space. So coming into that bent knee position on the right side. Now just feel if your buttock is lifting up. So draw your buttock down as you bend the knee. And then lift up through the pubic bone, drop this hip, drop this hip, drop this hip, and then bring the, you see the knee, bring it over the second, third toe. So in order to do that, you've got to move this hip back. So 
So I'm gonna just take a strap here to help her feel that action of bringing that buttock back and now bring the knee closer to the wall. Knee closer to the wall. Okay, and then lift your left arm up and lengthen over. That's it. Drop your left hip. That's better, yeah? So this inner thigh lifts so that you maintain the width weight on this outer foot. And then to get more length here, she's got to drop this left buttocks and extend through that left side. Turn so your shoulders are balancing at that wall, turning the chest. Keep this thigh moving back. Keep that knee moving back. Bring your arm over. Okay, to come up, come back into the feet, lift the arms up, both arms, and come up. Okay. And then turn the feet, come to the other side. Okay, we're gonna do the right side, left side now. So turning the left leg out, toes facing directly forward, so just make sure that you're in the process, your toes don't go in toward the inner edge of your mat, but press down, nail the big toe down, inner heel down, and then from there, lift the kneecap up, get that external rotation on the top of the thigh, and then bend the knee, and as you bend the knee, cutting that left buttock under, feel it slide down the wall, and as it slides down the wall, feel the length that comes from the back waist corners up through the side trunk. Good. Bend the knee a little bit more. Now keep the inner back thigh lifted and lift the right pelvis any amount. Thigh moving back toward the wall and reach the right arm up and lengthen over that leg. Have the block there for you. Bring the hand onto the block. Still mindful of the hip. So the hip is descending from the back waist corners. You're lengthening up through the side trunk. Back leg is moving back and then reach the arm up. Just first reach up, connect with the bottom hand. Bring that bottom shoulder blade into the body. Turn the top chest so you can feel both shoulders at the wall. Maintain that and then rotate the arm. So the outer arm, inner arm is moving over the head right through the fingertips. Now, I've shown you the other way to do that. So if that was difficult, you can bring your arm forward and then bring the arm up. So it's the same thing, this arm is rotating, but you may have kind of a hitch in your shoulder. If so, then do that other way. Come back to the front knee, drop that left hip, knee over the ankle, back thigh moving back, Feeling that opening come through the front body. For, it's a full extension through the front of the spine, through the front of the abdominal wall. Breathe. Keep moving that top shoulder back to the wall and extend right through the fingertips. Feeling the back of the head. Turn and look up underneath the arm. So when you're beginning and you're really trying to get this opening a little bit more, you can use that connection of the arm, the knee to the arm, so you know that the knee is not going over the big toe. And your hip is not lifting up. Okay, inhale, coming up, come back to the feet, come back to the legs, turn the feet, and jump the feet back together, come back into Tadasana. Tadasana. Tadasana at the wall.
Okay, just standing in Tadasana, we're going to come back to Parshvakanasana. We're going to do it again, because the first time we did it, we didn't bring the arm over and get that um, same depth in the pose. So we're going to do it one more time. So step a little away from the wall. You're going to jump your feet four, four and a half feet apart. Okay, she doesn't need that back block. All right, so she's turning that foot. You can have the foot away a little bit away from the back. Uh, yeah, okay. And then <clears throat> coming into it, she's going to bend the front. First of all, she's going to externally rotate from the front foot, lift up through the knee, externally rotate the thigh, and drop the left buttock, the right buttock. You can feel the right buttock moving down. You have the wall there, so see that you're moving the buttock down. And as you come down into that bent knee position, look down over your knee, so over the second and third toes. So just feel that you're getting that length from the inner groin to the inner knee. And there's actually a circular action. So it's wrapping from the inner groin and back, coming back to the outer hip. And that outer hip is moving forward towards your pelvis. So there's a compact action there of the hip moving toward the glutes, moving toward the front groin as the front groin lengthens and draws back. Okay, back foot, lift the inner back thigh, keep the knee firm, stay on the inner edge of the foot, but be on the outer edge of the foot. So the arch is lifting, and you can feel the outer heel, you can feel the outer big toe side. And then reach the left arm up and extend. So you're deepening through that front groin, Maintaining the front knee, so the shin bone is a little bit of a break, okay? So the knee can, you can feel that the knee is moving forward beyond your foot. So the shin bone is a break, so that when you were lengthening here, you're also drawing back, and you're maintaining that through that awareness of the shin bone moving back. Did you feel that? Yes. Yep. Okay, so her hand is on the block, shoulder blades moving in, and then she's reaching her arm up. Keep the shoulder, so she's getting that twisting action. This shoulder is not moving forward, but the shoulder blade's moving in, and as she moves the shoulder blade in, then she turns the top chest. So turn your top chest, lift up, reach the arm up. Now just mindful, be aware of this bottom thigh, that you can still feel it near that arm. As you get to practice longer, and you don't need the wall, you don't need to bring the knee to the, wall, to the arm, but here it's a good way to practice to know that you're getting the alignment that you need. And now turn the arm. And before you bring the arm over the head, just keep your head long, keep the back of the head at the wall. Extend the arm over, getting that rotation. So you're not just bringing it over, but you're turning the upper arm and upper shoulder and from there, from the back foot, extend all the way up through the side trunk, right up through the fingers. Okay, now, with that bottom ear still moving away from the floor, turn and look up. Bring that left knee toward the arm more and bring the buttock away from the wall. Right thigh back, left thigh back. Lift your left pelvic rim. That's it. Turn the abdomen. Turn the chest. And extend the fingers. Extend. So the arm is not turning this way. The arm is turning this way. Feel the difference? Okay. And then inhale. Come back to the legs, the feet. Reach that bottom arm up. Press up and come up. Good. Do you need to go into Tadasana? If you do, you can jump the feet together, or you can just go to the other side. Come to Tadasana. Okay, we stayed in that a little bit longer, so be in Tadasana. Just come to Tadasana as a resting pose. Okay, you teach a Parshvakanasana on the second side. Left leg, you teach to Parshvakanasana, bend the knee, externally rotate that buttock. So sometimes you even have to 
Let this leg bend a little bit to get that external rotation, dropping the hip. Fix that, and then start to extend and lengthen, moving this hip back while you maintain the other. Okay, now reach your right arm up. Keep the inner back thigh lifted and extend over that leg. So this thigh wants to fall forward. So I'm gonna help her by lifting up here. Lift up. Now bring your arm over. Externally rotate it and reach over. Now lengthen the lower waist to the armpit area. We extend. Good. Straighten the arm. Get that rotation on the arm, shoulder. That's it, good. Okay, come back to the feet, come back to the legs. With the bottom arm lifting up, lift the top arm up. Inhale, come up. Good, turn your feet, walk the feet in, jump the feet together, come back to Tadasana at the wall. So stabilize. Come back to that breath, that even breath, inhalation and exhalation. All right, we're going to go into Pavrita Trikonasana, and you're going to use the wall, okay? So you'll jump your feet, turning your right leg out. You take your block near your outer calf, near your outer ankle, and you can just start by bringing both hands onto your hips. Okay, so you're squaring your hips, you're moving the shoulder back, so you're not so pinned to the wall. All right, stay in the back foot. With your thumbs at your tailbone, move your tailbone forward, lengthen the whole front body and then reach the right arm up. And you're going to lengthen first. So you're gonna come over the front leg, extend over the front leg, and reach forward. So both shoulders are reaching forward, both shoulders are even, balancing the pelvis, and then take that hand over onto the block. Now, if this is still difficult for you, you can have the block on the inside of the foot as well. Okay, so take it either inside or outside. Once you have the hand on the block, bring the hand closer to the leg so you can use the hand on the leg, hand on the block, press into the leg, and use that connection to turn your bottom shoulder. So you're not just turning the shoulder here, you're turning the shoulder girdle, so it's a whole apparatus involving your shoulder blades, all the muscles, the top of the shoulder, the front of the shoulder. And then from here, you're gonna take your hand up the wall, bend the elbow, bring your fingertips onto the wall. And as you extend and lengthen, you're drawing this hip back. So this hip is moving back from the front leg, hip moving back from the back heel, lengthening forward. So use that wall to feel that connection, to feel that length. It's a twist, right? So we're always extending first and then we're turning. And with the breath, we're extending again and then we're turning. So there's little micro movements. If you, if you were to look at Lisa while you're doing your pose, you would not see much movement. So for you, I won't see much movement, but I know if you're using the breath, you're lengthening and then you're turning. And you're lengthening a little bit more and you're turning. So Prashanti calls it stealing an adjustment. So it's not visible from the outside, but you can feel it from the inside. You can feel the abdomen turning. You can feel the chest turning. You can feel that length coming. You can feel that energy movement within the body. 
So the more you draw the muscles into the bone, the more you find that contact of the abdominal area and the turning of the abdomen, the more you can start to feel that energetic quality. Okay, inhale, come up, turn the feet, and then come back to the center, and then turning to do the other side. All right, so both shoulders moving back, both hands on the hips. She's got her thumbs right at her tailbone, so she's feeling that sacral band. The sacral band is wide. This hip is moving forward. The front hip is moving back. So first, she's going to lengthen that left arm, that right arm and extend. So not moving toward the wall, just extending. So both sides of the trunk are extending lengthening, and then bring the hand down, adjusting the block for what you need, getting that connection from the hand to the, to the outer side of the leg, turn that whole shoulder. So work on first lengthening and then turning, and then lengthening again. So this is that area that gets really tight and that really needs to be worked on. So softening with the breath, softening with each breath, turning. And then finally bringing your hand up onto the wall using the fingertips. And as you use the fingertips, you're guiding this shoulder away from the wall and you're moving this side of the chest toward the wall. So your front body is gonna be parallel to the wall. Of course, moving each time with the breath to lengthen and then turn. Keep the head so that the neck is long. Back of the head is moving in line with the back of the body to keep that chest lifted. Crown of the head is directly, could hit the wall in front of you, lengthening. Watch where you are in the feet. Are you on the outer edge of the foot? Are you on the inner edge? Nail the big toe down. Stay with that inner side of the foot to keep the outer calf from moving toward the wall. Outer calf is moving in toward the center. Outer thigh is moving toward the center. The same here, outer calf moving in, outer thigh moving in, but also lifting up. Okay, come back to the legs. Inhale, come up, turn, revolve, and then jump your feet together. Tadasana. So coming to the wall, stabilize. And now we're going to go into forward virasana. So with support, you're going to use bolsters and a blanket. So bringing here, because uh, she wants a little bit more height, she wants it right under her abdomen so that the spine is parallel to the floor. So she Put two blocks here, and then the bolster on top. The blanket is for the head. Bring the bolster right into the pit of the abdomen so that the whole abdominal area and the whole front of the body is lying over that bolster. And then move forward, move the blanket, and then fold your arms, bring your head onto that. So here, as you're in this position, you can feel the abdomen on that bolster. You can also start to feel the lower back broadening. So be with the breath, feel the breath, broaden through the back body, and let your hips sink down so that the heaviness in the hips, that depth in the groin is making space in the front abdominal cavity and making space for the breath. Just be there. Very quieting, relaxing. You've been doing a lot of standing poses. So just using forward virasana to just have a little bit of a rest before we go on. It's important to know when you need to be in a more restorative pose. You've been doing a lot of standing poses, using that Ardha Uttanasana that we were in at the wall at the beginning or coming into Uttanasana with the hips at the wall, or 
forward virasana, or any number of forward bends so that you recover yourself, recover the breath. Just change the cross on your arms. When you recover the breath, the breath is stabilizing your inhalation and your exhalation. Allowing the exhalation to be longer. All right, and then come up. So now she's going to go into Ustrasana and she's gonna use the chair a couple of blankets, and a bolster. So depending on your chair, depending on your capabilities, you may have to build it up a little bit differently, but you can start with the chair, and you'll bring your feet underneath the chair. Um, no, for Ustrasana, I think just we had blankets here. Two blankets on the chair. Okay, and because she's on the mat, it's going to be okay for her feet. If you wanted to bring a blanket under your feet, you could do that. So she's got the block here for the knees, and we're going to bring the bolster behind her hips and the seat of the chair, and then use that to just allow her to come into that back bending action. And a smile came to her face, so that feels good. So you can bring your arms down so you can maintain that openness through the chest. Here, the bolster is right at the top of the buttocks and just giving her the idea of moving the buttocks forward. So it's supporting the buttocks, supporting the lower back. There's a couple blankets there so that that bolster doesn't sink back. And then here, she's got her head resting on the bolster. Now, if depending on your bolster, if your bolster is softer and that it's not keeping that firmness, then you can build it up with a couple more blankets. You could even put another bolster there. So come up one minute. So I'll just show you, if your bolster wasn't firm, you could have that support behind as well. So it's a back bend. Ustrasana, but it's a supported Ustrasana. So the back muscles are getting a rest, the neck muscles, the head. And you're still, it's actually a standing pose. So you're on your knees, your thighs are connected to the pelvis, the, the buttocks muscles are moving forward with the tailbone to get that space in the front of the groin. Just be with your breath. Stay a couple more breaths. You can also take the arms over the head and hold onto the elbows. So you can adjust the arms and be in all three positions. Three meaning you will change the crust on the arms, but here you're getting the open armpit area. Shoulder blades are moving in and down and that same movement of the arm, the outer arm turning in. So this is not moving out, but it's rolling in. Just like when you bring your arms over for Parjva Kanasa. Okay, change the cross on the arms. So as we were doing a lot of lateral poses going to the side, now here through the front body, the anterior spine is getting that length. The whole abdominal cavity is getting that extension. So the abdomen is um, getting extended on both sides in the center, and there's more space in that area for the breath. There's more blood flow going to the back muscles. And when there's more blood flow in the back muscles, the, the veins and the arteries 
are being used so that there's clear pathways. If you're not using the muscles, the veins and the arteries start to shrink. Okay, then come up. Carefully bring your hands to your bolster, lift your head, lift your shoulders, and come up. Okay, so now we're going to go into Ardha Halasana. So she's going to set up with the blankets. Depending on your chair, again, the height of your chair, also the height of your femur bone, you may have to make different adjustment, but we'll show here based on Lisa, she's pretty much an average height length, but if you have long femur bones, you may need to have more support. Okay, so she has two folded blanket, so she's getting some support for the neck. And it has a little bit of height for her hips. So depending on your abdominals, if you can lift up, then that's probably enough height. If you need a little bit more height, you can put a bolster underneath your hips. But this is already giving you a little bit of support. So now I'm going to take the bolster here. And she can lift the legs up and over and then bring the feet under. She's going to walk her shoulders under and then walk her legs forward. So just the tops of the thighs are on the bolster. Okay, so she's adjusted her arms. She's on the tops of the shoulders. So sometimes we adjust our arms from behind us, lengthening. But here, in Halasana, she can just bring her arms over her head. As long as you're on the tops of your shoulders, then that will work. If you're not, then you're going to be falling back. So you have to be right up over your shoulders, your hips over your shoulders, and then legs completely supported. So now here, all of the contents of the abdomen are suspended. Your heart is over your head. The blood flow is moving with gravity. So there's a real sense of relaxation and release. Your parasympathetic nervous system starts to kick in, and the mind becomes quiet. So it's important that you get the right height under the, under the legs if you need extra support. If you don't, if you're not very long, then you, the legs will be on the chair, maybe just a blanket. So getting the right props to be able to be there is going to be important to be able to fully relax. So just taking your time, testing it out, seeing what you need. So the legs are, I could some, sometimes I'll put a weight here as well. So with that little bit of extra weight, especially if this bolster was a little bit higher and the legs were a little bit lifted, she would feel like the legs need to come down. But I think this is pretty, pretty good height. So there's support there for the neck, support for the shoulders. If that's not enough support, you feel that you need more, you can have another blanket. You can have three to four blankets. So taking that height, this is a, a folded blanket, so it's like three blankets, but each blanket is a little bit different width or thickness. So taking that thickness that you need. So once you practice for a while, you'll start to see if you feel comfortable, if you can relax, if your nervous system is relaxing, and then you'll know if you need to make some adjustments. Okay, so it's a restorative pose this is. So you want to be able to let go of any thinking about what doesn't feel good or bad. And then once you get the right setup, you can do that. Let your legs be completely released into that support so that the spine is completely suspended and relaxed. So here you're not using any of the muscles in the spine. They're all being supported by the shoulders and by the hips. There's a lot of circulation and blood flow happening with gravity. Also, you're in a chin lock. 
it's not really a chin lock, but your chest is moving towards your chin and your throat is narrowed. So this is one of the bandhas that we use, in, especially in pranayama, but in shoulder stand and setcha bandha, sarvangasana. So the throat passage is more narrowed. You can start to listen to your breath, start to be observant of the sound and follow that sound. Observe the breath in the throat. Observe your inhalation and your exhalation. So here, <coughs> this is inverted dandasana. So it's a little bit of a forward bend just because you're bending at the hips. So now she's going to come out one leg at a time. Hands behind you, press the fingertips down into the floor behind your back and then start to come down one leg at a time or slowly using your hands, using your arms, bringing your legs down the bolster and then finally bringing your feet onto the floor. Once your feet are onto the floor, then move your head and shoulders toward your chair end, bringing your upper back onto the floor. And just be there. You can bring your knees together and feet to the side. So here now your throat is more opened your head is in the same position, but your chest is no longer lifted. So just relax the back ribs, relax the shoulders, the shoulder blades, relax the arms. And then roll onto your side. And press yourself up. Okay, so she's going to come into such a banda now. So she can use the blocks at the wall. So turn to the wall. Bring the blocks to the wall. And she can use the bolster. Okay, so she's going to have the bolster spine-wise, so her back is completely supported. And she'll be a little bit away from the wall. So when she comes into this, she wants to sit on the bolster, have her whole back on the bolster, and then she'll slide down and bring her head and shoulders off. So this is kind of something that you have to see. You have to go down. Did you get the right length? And then if not, then you come up and move the bolster. So when you slide down, you want to be able to then bring your feet onto your blocks and have your feet at the wall. Now, she's just measured the right distance, maybe a little bit away, is it? Yeah, she needs to move this way a little bit. No. Bolster just a tad. Yeah. Okay, so when you slide down, you want to slide your shoulders down, the skin of your shoulders, the skin of your back, so that your chest lifts. And if you have a knot at the head the, from a ponytail, then move that to the side. Okay? Feet at the wall, thighs descending. And she's, yeah, she's a little bit too far off. Bend your knees. So lift your hips up, lift your shoulders. I'm going to bring it a little bit further forward. That's it. So it's the right distance now. But you don't want to have it too far down underneath your shoulder blades or your, your ribs. So just beyond your shoulder blades so that the chest is lifting, shoulders are moving down onto the floor, and then turn the arms out to the side. So here, these blocks seem like they might be a little high. So depending on your bolster, how does that feel? Better? Yeah, so you want your legs in line with your, 
your heels. Unless you're feeling that you need a little bit more height, then you can take the legs higher, but normally in line with your hips is good. If you have your feet down, your legs down, if you have your feet down, your legs down, um, you're gonna be doing a little bit more of a back bend. So that can also be done. That's uh, Sechabandha Sarvangasana. Um, but this is a little bit more restorative, okay? So your hips are on the bolster, your back is relaxed, your upper, your middle back, so that after you've been working with all of the postures you've been working with at the wall and being active, the spinal column can completely relax. And as you relax from the back body, the front body opens. And with that opening comes that breath and that movement of circulation into the heart area. So just be with that, be with your breath. Start to lengthen your exhalations. Cut, stay there. How long have we been going, Tito? Um, seven or six. One ten? Okay. You can also take some heaviness on your thighs. You can take blankets, you could take some blocks, you could take some weights, depending on what you have there. You can make that. Movement downward, so that further you're relaxing away, moving down. Okay, so you can stay there as long as you want. We'll come up now and you can take Shavasana, okay? So taking your props away, bend your knees. And this time we'll take Shavasana on the chair. You can bring your legs onto the chair and you can have a blanket as well so that the, you may need two blankets depending on how much height, but you're gonna bring your hips right underneath the chair. We've done this before in some of the other classes. So again, the knees underneath the hips. Calves are resting on the chair and you're allowing the, the thighs to descend into the pelvis. So the arms and the shoulders, the legs and the hips, they're all ball and socket joints. So once that leg is moving into the socket, there's some ease and some release of tension through the lower back, through the pelvis. Shoulders are resting on the floor. Arms are connected to the shoulder socket, but also relaxing as you rotate them outward. Chest stays open. And there's a slight lift in the chest, so that's twisting action that we had when we were lifting the head, bringing the head back. There's still that from the back body to the front body, that slight lift 
and openness that comes through the heart. Start to become sensitive again to the breath and the movement of the breath, letting that exhalation release further and further so that you fully exhale. That release of the exhalation is what helps to release any stress, release tiredness. Release any holding. Sometimes we just hold and we don't know that we're holding. So using your exhalation, letting it go further and further. Breathing in normally with your inhalation. You'll know when to inhale. And then finally letting go of that breath. Just allow the body to breathe you. Feeling that sense of quietness, that sense of peace, that sense of balance. Till the next class, namaste.